What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome to our second example video following our course on abstract algebra. Now, this video is going to be on mathematical induction, and then we're gonna have a few examples at the end of the video which are on congruences. So let's go ahead and get into this first example which will be on mathematical induction. So we wanna prove that for all natural numbers, little n, we have the following equation holds. So we have one times three plus two times four plus all the way up to n times n plus two is equal to n times n plus one times two n plus seven all over six. So a reminder, when we do a proof by induction, we will first prove a base case and then prove an induction step to show that each case proves the next case. Great, so let's go ahead and do our base case first. So in this case, our base case will be when n is equal to one. So when n is equal to one, we will have one times one plus two on our left-hand side. We wanna show that that is equal to one times one plus one times two times one plus seven all over six. And so we can see that this will be a nine and this will be a two, so we'll get 18 on the top there. And of course, both sides of this will be equal to three as we have one times one plus two. And like I said, the right hand side is equal to three. So that's good. We've proved our base case here when n is equal to one. So now we want to state our induction hypothesis. And that's going to be that suppose for all k, which is a natural number, the following equality holds. We have that one times three plus two times four plus all the way up to k times k plus two is equal to k times k plus one times two k plus seven all over six. And so from here, we want to consider the next case, which in this case will be the k plus first case. So we're going to consider, like I said before, the k plus first case. And so that will be just the same as we had before. We'll have one times three plus two times four plus all the way up to k times k plus two, but then we'll have one more term which comes from our next case. We'll have k plus one times k plus three. And from here, I want to note that we want to show that this is equal to k plus one times k plus two times two k plus nine all over six. Great, so from here we can apply our induction hypothesis and replace this entire part here with this which I've underlined in blue. So let's go ahead and make that substitution here. So we'll have k times k plus one times two k plus seven all over six, and that will be plus just this part right here, which is k plus one times k plus three. Now we wanna combine these two terms, so we'll go ahead and multiply this right term here by six over six, and when we do that, we'll get k times k plus one times two k plus seven plus six times k plus one times k plus three all over six. Great, so now we're just gonna factor out what we have common for both these two terms here, and that will be k plus one over six, so we'll write that out front k plus one over six, and then what's left will be k times two k plus seven plus six times k plus three. We're gonna go ahead and multiply that out now. So what we'll get is k plus one over six times we'll have two k squared plus seven k. Then we're gonna get a plus six k from our next term, and then we'll have lastly plus 18. Now from here I want to note that this is what we want to show is on is in the numerator. So we want to manipulate our polynomial that we've just created to be k plus two times two k plus nine, or rather if we did this right, it will factor to be that. So let's go ahead and combine our like terms here. So we'll have k plus one over six times two k squared plus 13 k plus 18, and indeed this will factor as we want. This is equal to k plus one over six times k plus two times two k plus nine. We can see if we multiply that out, when we multiply k into two k, we'll get two k squared, then we'll have plus nine k plus four k, which is 13 k, and lastly we'll have two times nine, which is plus 18. So this is indeed the correct factorization of that polynomial. So we can see that when we multiply what we have out front into 
our now factored polynomial there, we will get exactly what we needed to show. We'll have k plus one times k plus two times two k plus nine all over six, which completes this proof by induction. Great, so let's go ahead and get to the next example. So this next example is also a proof by induction. We want to prove that for all natural numbers little n, we have the following inequality holds. We have one over one plus one over four plus one over nine, or in general, the sum of one over n squared is less than or equal to two minus one over n. So once again, we're going to start this problem off by doing a base case. And our base case is going to be like last time when n is equal to one. Well, when n is equal to one, one over n squared is just going to be one. And we wanna show that that is less than or equal to two minus one over n, but one over n is just one. And it is true that one is less than or equal to one. So our base case is confirmed there. Great, so now we wanna write out our induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is Suppose that for all k, which is a natural number, we have the following relationship. We have that one over one plus one over four plus one over nine plus all the way up to one over k squared is less than or equal to two minus one over k. Great. And so now we want to consider the next case. So we're going to consider the k plus first case. So I'll write that out, k plus first case. So let's go ahead and write out our k plus first case. We'll have one over one plus one over four plus one over nine plus all the way up to our one over k squared. But we have one more term. We have one over k plus one squared. And from here, we want to push our inequality to the right. And we're going to do that because we want to show that what we have right here is less than or equal to two minus one over k plus one. So we're gonna do that first by making the following substitution using our induction hypothesis. We're gonna substitute two minus one over k in for here. So we'll have that that whole thing will be less than or equal to two minus one over k. And then we'll have plus one over the quantity k plus one squared. Now let's go ahead and combine our like terms or put our k's together in the same fraction. So this will be equal to two minus, well, let's see, we'll have k plus one quantity squared plus k over our common denominator, which will be k times k plus one quantity squared. And so we wanna make something that is bigger than this, but since this fraction is negative, we can do that by reducing the size of this fraction. So let's go ahead and note that this will be less than or equal to two minus, we'll have still k plus one squared in the numerator, and then we'll have k times k plus one squared. But right away, you can see that these k plus one quantity squareds will cancel. So we'll be left with that this is less than or equal to two minus one over k. But that is, of course, less than or equal to two minus one over k plus one. So if we look at our extreme right hand and left hand sides here. We'll see that we have proved what we wanted to prove. We have proved that our sum here at the start is less than or equal to two minus one over k plus one. Great, so that finishes this proof off. Let's go ahead and get into the next one. So for this next one, we have yet again another proof by induction, and we want to prove that three divides our polynomial here, n cubed plus five n plus six for all natural numbers little n. So as we have been, let's go ahead and start with our base case. And for this one, our base case is once again going to be when n is equal to one. So let's go ahead and plug n into our polynomial and see if the result is divisible by three. So we'll have one cubed plus five times one, which is just five plus six, but one plus five plus six is equal to 12. And obviously three will divide 12. So we are good for our base case there. So let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis next. So our induction hypothesis will be that suppose for all k, which is a natural number, we have that three divides the polynomial k cubed plus five k plus six. Great. And now we want to consider our next case. We want to consider our k plus first case. So let's go ahead and plug k plus one in for the k's in this polynomial. Well, we'll have k plus one cubed plus five times k plus one plus six. Well, we can go ahead and cube our k plus one to start with, and we will get k cubed plus three k squared plus three k plus one. 
And then we can multiply that five to our k plus one and we'll have five k plus five plus six. And so now we want to rearrange these, this polynomial so that we can get something that resembles our induction hypothesis. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take the k cubed and then a plus five k. And then we also need a plus six. And then we we'll go ahead and write what is left. So we have a three k squared then we'll have plus 3k. And let's see, we had plus 12 there, so let's go ahead and add our plus six right here. Great. So by our induction hypothesis, we know that three will divide our k cubed plus 5k plus six, but if by the definition of divisibility, that means we can write it as three times an integer. Let's just call that integer a. So that means that for some integer, which we'll call a, we can write the following substitution. We will have 3a plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 6. Great. And we can very easily see that we can just factor a 3 out of that. We will have a plus k squared plus k plus 2. Great. And that's all we need to do to prove that this is divisible by 3, which completes this proof. So let's go ahead and get to the next one. So for this one, we want to prove that if we have two natural numbers, n and k, where our n is even and our k is odd, that n choose k is even. So for this problem, we are going to be doing our induction over n, so our k will be free. So let's go ahead and write out what our base case will be then. So our base case is going to be when n is equal to two, as that is the first even number. We will not be considering zero a natural number in this class. And then k will be free. Great, so we will have two choose k. But from here, we want to note the following. So we want to note that for all k greater than or equal to three, keeping in mind that k is defined to be an odd number, we will have that n choose k is equal to zero. Great, so then we only need to consider the cases where k is less than three, but that will just be one case, which is two choose one. So then we want to consider 2 choose 1, while well, 2 choose 1 is of course just equal to 2, which is even. So that means we are good to go with our base case here. So next, let's go ahead and write out our induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis will be to suppose that for all natural numbers, let's replace n with l. So we have l and k, which are, like I said, natural numbers, where we have that L is even and K is odd, that L choose K is even. Great, and so now we wanna consider our next case. So we want to consider our, it'll be L plus second case for this one because L is an even number, so we can't do our L plus first case or we will have an odd N or we will have an odd L. So we're gonna consider the L plus second case here and that'll be given by L plus two choose K. Great. And so to simplify this, we are going to use the recursion formula for binomial coefficients. And so doing so will give us the following. We will have that this L plus two choose K is equal to L plus one choose K minus one plus L plus one choose K. Great. And so then we're going to apply this formula one more time. So this will be equal to the following. We will have L choose K minus two plus L choose K minus one. And then we'll apply the formula to our second term and we'll be left with L choose K minus one plus L choose K. Great. So right away, we know that by our induction hypothesis, this is even. So we're good for that term. Next, let's combine these two middle like terms. So we'll be left with L choose K minus two plus two times L choose K minus one. But of course, because we have a two out front, this will also be even. So we're good there. And so all that we're left with, so I'll go ahead and write that. We are left with our L choose K minus two. But because k is odd, we know that k minus 2 is odd, which means that we know for a fact that L choose k minus 2 will be even. 
And since right here we have the sum of even numbers, the result will be even, and thus we have proven that L plus two choose K is even. Great, so let's go ahead and get into our next problem. So this is our first congruence problem. So we want to suppose that A, B, C, and D are integers, and N is a natural number such that A is congruent to C mod N, and B is congruent to D mod N. We want to show that the following relationship holds, that A plus B is congruent to C plus D mod N. So if we have that A is congruent to C mod N, then by definition of congruence mod, that means that A minus C is equal to some multiple of N, let's call it X, where X is an integer. And by the same logic, we can apply that to our definition of B being congruent to D mod N. So that means that B minus D will be equal to a multiple of N, well, let's just call it Y, and Y is of course an integer. Great. So from here, we're going to take these two equations and add them together. So when we do that, we'll get A plus B minus C minus D is equal to X times N plus Y times N. And so we're gonna go ahead and factor out an N from our right hand side. So this will be equal to N times X plus Y. And from here, all we need to do is add C and D to the right hand side. And we'll have A plus B is equal to C plus D plus N times X plus Y. And so what this says is that the difference between A plus B and C plus D is a multiple of N, which is all we need to do to prove that A plus B is congruent to C plus D mod N. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our final problem. So for our final problem of today's video, we want to show that there is a solution to the congruence AX is congruent to B mod N if and only if B is a multiple of the GCD of A and N. So to begin this problem, let's go ahead and let D equal the GCD of A and N. Great. So then by the definition of the GCD, that means that there exists integers, let's call them S and T, such that we have the following, that A times S plus N times T is equal to D. Next, let's note that if B divides this GCD D, then we can write B in the following way by the definition of divisibility, B is equal to C times D for some integer C. Now putting this all together, we will have that B is equal to C times D, and we'll use this definition for D. So B will equal C times AS plus N times T, which will equal A times CS plus N times CT which is all that we need to show to show that there is a solution. Great. Now, I'm not gonna do the other proof for this if and only if statement, but you can do it on your own for homework if you'd like and post about it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.